Pie charts are also a common choice for data visualization. They're especially good if you want to emphasize the proportions of people in each category. There are, however, two important qualifications for using pie charts. First, they work best if you have only a few categories, or at least a few large ones, as a pie chart that looks like chromatic spokes on a wheel is not helpful. Second, the categories have to be mutually exclusive. That is, people need to be in only one category so the pie segments add up to 100%. This is not necessary with bar charts. Each of the bars could have, for example, 99% of the cases if people fall into more than one category. With those qualifications in mind, pie charts are generally easy to make. For example, here is a pie chart based on the education data from the bar chart I made earlier. I made this pie chart with Excel and just used the defaults, which is why one of the labels is in an odd place. It works, but it's not fabulous. And while pie charts are common, they have some problems. The first is that they indicate values through angles and areas of circles, both of which can be very hard to read. These two sets of charts demonstrate the problem. The first set of charts consists of three pie charts. Each chart shows the percentage of respondents in each of six categories. Your job is to look at the pie charts and determine whether there are more people in slice C or slice D of each pie chart. Here they are. Again, your job is to look at the pie charts and determine whether there are more people in slice C, which is green, or slice D, which is purple, in each pie chart. It turns out that it's hard to do. On the other hand, if we put the same data into bar charts, and I'll even use the same colors, then the job is much easier. Here, your job is to look at the charts and determine whether there are more people in bar C, which is green, or bar D, which is purple, in each chart. In this case, it's so easy as to be trivial. D is longer on the left chart, as well as in the middle chart, but C is longer on the right chart. The reason this is easy now is because whereas pie charts require judgments of angles and the areas of circle segments, operations from geometry, trigonometry, and calculus, bar charts only require comparisons on a single linear dimension, and that's an operation from arithmetic. Less energy is spent interpreting the chart, so more energy can be spent interpreting the actual data. That's as it should be. But just in case it isn't yet clear that pie charts can have problems, Here's a sanitized version of a pie chart that appeared on national news during the 2012 U.S. presidential primary elections. Several things are wrong here. First, the percentages add up to 193%, which should not happen. That's because the categories here are not mutually exclusive. In this chart, the results are from a primary election, and so the candidates are all from the same party. It's not too surprising that a voter might like more than one. This is less likely to happen in a general election when the candidates are all from different parties. What the news agency should have reported was which candidates people backed the most. I'd also like to point out that the above pie chart leans way back and has a false third dimension to give it thickness. Both of these contribute to misreading. For example, candidate B slice is at the bottom of the chart and the thickness of the pie contributes to the perception that their slice is larger than candidate A's even though 63% is less than 70%. Also, it looks much larger than candidate C's, even though it's only a little bit bigger. Both of these practices should be avoided. And given the problems with pie charts, it's usually best to ignore them completely.